Everyone remembers their first starter Pokémon, a cute little companion that joined you as you experienced the world of Pokémon for the first time. But when it comes to competitive Pokémon, you gotta throw your friend in the trash. It's all about stats, not friendship, right? Well, not always. Several starter Pokémon have been extremely successful in competitive play, but out of these trios of starter companions, which group has been the most successful at staying by your side from Route 1 to the World Championships? Now before we begin, just quickly, this video is about official competitive of Pokemon. That's VGC, 4v4, double battles. So don't expect me to go on about how Speed Boost plays a kid and broke Generation 4 singles or whatever. We'll be briefly going through each Pokemon's successes and what made it successful, based on tournaments as recorded by Limitless VGC and Victory Road. And if I miss out on these shoes, sorry. I'm trying to get through 30 Pokemon here. Anyway, let's get into it. We're gonna go in Fire, Water, Grass order for each generation. So first and foremost, Charizard, Game Freak's Golden Child. When a Pokemon has gimmick forms, we're gonna I try to talk about each of them separately unless they blend together. So, how was Base Charizard? Well, surprisingly, the first time that Base Charizard was seen commonly in competitive play was early Pokemon Sword and Shield. The players had a choice to make. Would they want to have access to Charizard's Gigantamax form, its powerful G-Max Wildfire, a signature move with a huge base power, and that deals one-sixth of all non-Fire-type opponents max HP each turn for four turns, or access to Charizard's hidden ability Solar Power, which essentially gives you a Life Orb boost in Sun at the cost of some HP at the end of each turn. Both versions had access to the extremely powerful Max Airstream, the flying Dynamax move that increased the speed of both your Pokemon. So, the question was basically, do you want the extra power boost on each of your moves, or do you prefer the damage over time effect from G-Max Wildfire? Players were split on which was stronger, but by March of 2020, you were allowed to run Gigantamax and Solar Power at the same time. This Gigantamax Solar Power form was Charizard's preferred set for the remainder of Sword and Shield, and it was dominant, culminating in a second place finish at worlds in 2022. So, moving on, we have Mega Charizard. Yes, both of them. Charizard got two Mega Forms, X and Y. When you Mega Evolved Charizard into Mega Charizard X, it got a huge stat boost and became Dragon and Fire type, like we all thought it was in second grade. And it gains the ability Tough Claws, which increases the power of contact moves by 30%. Of course, that meant that all Mega Charizards were physical attackers. Mega Charizard X had some success, winning a regional in the hands of Wolf Glick. It had a few other successes here and there, but all of it pales in comparison to Mega Charizard Y. Mega Charizard Y was pretty simple. It stayed fire and flying type, and it gained the ability Drought, which sets up Sun upon Mega Evolution and whenever you switch to Mega Charizard Y in. Mega Charizard Y had an insane base 159 special attack. So when you combine that insane stat with a stab boost and a 50% sun boost for fire type attacks, you have an absolutely obscene damage dealer. Mega Charizard Y was basically proto Chiyu with its ridiculous overheat damage count and it showed. Mega Charizard Y had a documented 33 regional top 8s, not to mention an insane number of special event and international finishes. So yeah, this guy was, he was pretty good. Finally, out of the Charizard woods, we have Blastoise, by far the most humble of the Kanto starters. Vanilla Blastoise has, to my knowledge, essentially no results without a gimmick to back it up. Mega Blastoise was a slightly different story. First off, when it Mega Evolved, its special attack goes up by a whopping 50 points to 135, and it gains the ability Mega Launcher, and a ability that increases the power of pulse moves by 50%. Unfortunately, Blastoise wasn't great at using this move, because a 50% boosted water pulse was still only 90 base power. No, the real way people took advantage of Blastoise was that 135 special attack, giving it a devastatingly strong water spout, a move that starts at 150 base power and gets weaker as you get hurt. In formats where Kyogre wasn't around, Mega Blastoise was one of the move's strongest users. These tools gave Mega Blastoise enough to have a few finishes, but nothing crazy. Gigantamax Blastoise was probably the strongest the Pokemon has ever been. G-Max Cannonade is a clone of G-Max Wildfire, the move we talked about earlier, except instead of fire types being immune, water types are. This move allowed Blastoise to use your Dynamax to provide some real field pressure, while its great supporting moves, Fake Out, Yawn, Helping Hand, etc., allowed it to provide support when it didn't Dynamax. This was a pretty popular option on the Zacian Calyrex Shadow Rider teams that were popular during the 2021-2022 season of Sword and Shield Regionals. In fact, that's the first team I ever brought to a regional, so I have a soft spot for it. Basically, Blastoise had some good support tools, but not a lot of field presence, so it depended on gimmicks to give it that extra oomph it needed to be scary on the battlefield. Next up is Venusaur. This guy is by far the strongest out of the three in its base form. Venusaur's hidden ability is Chlorophyll, which doubles its speed in the sun. This made Venusaur an extremely obnoxious, sleep powder spamming maniac. On top of that, it packed powerful sludge bombs and whatever grass type stab you wanted at the time, Leaf Storm, Energy Ball, Giga Drain, whatever. Plus, great coverage options like 
Earth Power. Base Venusaur was particularly good in 2018 because its typing was great at hitting all of the Tapus and for resisting all of their stabs except for Tapu Lele. Basically, whenever Sun Team has been viable, Venusaur has been around. Sometimes with Torkoal, sometimes with Groudon, sometimes even with Mega Charizard Y. During Sword and Shield, with its Giganamax form, Venusaur served an extremely similar role on Sun Teams as we discussed above, but with the option of becoming a devastating sweeper with its max moves, especially G-Max Vine Lash, which works just like the other two Kanto starters G-Max moves, but with grass types being immune. This wasn't as popular as G-Max Charizard, since Charizard did absurd damage and had access to Max Airstream, a really powerful move, but Venusaur was certainly around. It even won the seniors division of the World Championship. Oh, but like he calls it! It's a big read, Max Flare into Zashin in the sun. Your seniors division world champion! Finally, we have Venusaur's Mega Form. In this form, Venusaur trades its ability for Thick Fat, which makes Venusaur take 50% damage from Ice and Fire type attacks, functionally making it take neutral damage from two types that normally hit it for super effective damage. Venusaur's Mega Form functionally traded speed for defense, making it a great Leech Seed user, able to take lots of hits thanks to its additional bulk and defensive ability, and heal the damage it took back with Leech Seed and Giga Drain. Mega Venusaur wasn't nearly as popular as its base form, but it did have some results, and I think it's a pretty cool design. Alright, we are one-tenth of the way through the starter Pokemon, but it's okay. Most starters don't have ten forms between them. If you're enjoying so far, subscribe. Next, we have Generation 2. Starting with Typhlosion, I thought this guy had some success as a Choice Scarf Eruption user back in the day, but I guess that wasn't as strong as I thought, because the only real result I could find was one top 16 at a 2015 Australian Regional on a team that was all starter Pokemon. And guess what? That's as good as it gets because I could find literally no results for Meganium or for Alligator. Meganium has literally no redeeming qualities. And sure, Gralligator can do the sheer force life orb combo like Nidoking or Landorus, but just look at its stats. They aren't exactly optimized. I tell you so. <laughs> Moving away from that train wreck, we have Generation 3, and it's better, but that's not very hard to say. Starting with Blaziken, its base form saw a little bit of success in 2015, top aiding three regionals. Unless you've lived under a rock, you know about Blaziken's ability Speed Boost, which increases its speed by one stage for each turn it's on the field. The idea was that, with one Speed Boost, which was really easy to get with Protect, Blaziken 1v1'd a bunch of the Pokémon on the really popular Chalk Core, which was Cresselia, Heatran, Amoongus, Landorus, and Kangaskhan. But the whole thing ended up being a lot better in theory than in practice. Funnily enough, Mega Blaziken was actually less successful than Base Blaziken in 2015, but it saw a fair amount of success in 2018, including a regional win. Mega Blaziken actually has the same ability as Base Blaziken, Speed Boost, so Mega Evolving it was all about just getting the big chunk of stats. Mega Blaziken was often paired with Bisharp to discourage your opponents from Intimidate Cycling your Mega Blaziken while it's trying to set up its Speed Boost. It doesn't matter how fast you are if you hit like a wet noodle. Next, we have Swampert. Swampert has seen a sprinkling of success in its base form throughout the years, but never consistently. It would pop up once or twice during a year as a bulky water type, but its hidden ability is damp, which is just not very good. So it had to rely entirely on its typing and stats, which are good, but there are so many other strong water types to choose from. Its Mega Form ability is Swift Swim, which doubles your speed in the rain. This is pretty strong, and from my research, it seems that Mega Swampert was a pretty popular European rain Pokemon in 2018. It only had one regional top 8, but had plenty of special event top 8s. Finally, we have Sceptile. This poor little dude has zero top 8 results in his base form. I guess there's just too much competition for grass types for this cool lizard. His Mega Form had exactly three notable results spread across four years. I guess being four times weak to ice and having an ability that makes you immune to a type you already four times resist isn't exactly great. Sorry, buddy. Okay, we're through all the Pokemon that have more than one form, so maybe we'll be able to pick up the pace from here. Generation 4 starts off with Infernape, and this guy's pretty unique. Usually in VGC, mixed attackers, Pokemon that use both their physical attack stat and their special attack stat, are pretty uncommon, but Infernape's an exception. Because both its attack and special attack are pretty high, people would often do a 1-2 combo. First, Infernape pressures with Fake Out or Close Combat, inflitches something or KOs something, and then, because it's so frail, it goes down to its Focus Sash. At which point it will have its blaze boost, allowing it to fire off an incredibly powerful overheat. Obviously, it didn't always go in that exact order, but some mix of these types of tools are what Infernape usually packs. He's never been a staple, but he shows up on successful teams every now and then, including Justin Karras' Top 8 Worlds team in 2016 and Top 8 at 2010 Worlds. Empoleon started off really strong as an Icy Wind slash Surf support Pokemon that was used in conjunction with Toxicroak to win the 2009 Pokemon World Championships, and then 
what did it do? Nothing except show up in exactly one top eight in 2019. But very recently, Empoleon got access to competitive, which boosts its special attack by two stages if any of its stats are dropped. This is a huge upgrade, so it's possible that in the right format, Empoleon will finally start to see play, maybe. But at least he's better off than Torterra, who has had exactly zero results documented by Limitless VGC. A four times weakness, mediocre bulk, and a middling speed stat isn't exactly a winner. Sorry, Turtwig fans, but hey, at least he's one of the only starter Pokemon to be used by a gym leader. Now we're in Unova and we have Embor. This guy only really has one finish. At the 2011 World Championships in the hands of Wolf Click as a Trick Room Sweeper and a powerful fire type meant to handle Amoongus, Embor really only saw play here. In 2011, only Pokemon from the Unova regional decks were legal, so the options were extremely limited. Similarly, Samurott saw play in 2011, then never again. It was a solid special attacking water type, which allowed it to super effectively hit the popular Crocodile and Terrakian. This niche got it all the way up the top four of worlds that year, and then it vanished forever. Superior, on the other hand, did not see success in 2011, but later, with its hidden ability Contrary, it started to show up. Contrary says that if a stat of yours would go up, it goes down instead, and vice versa. So, Superior would use Leaf Storm, a powerful grass-type attack that usually drops your special attack. Instead, Superior's would go up. This is an extremely powerful effect, but realistically, the rest of its toolkit stopped it from being super strong. Jamie Boy did use it to top cut four different regional level events though, and he won one of them. Next we have the Kalos region in Generation 6. Starting with Delphox, this guy has never, ever, no way, no how been good. It just has really mediocre stats, and its hidden ability, Magician, is just way too situational. Now Greninja, he saw a little bit of success in 2015, but mostly we saw in 2018 paired with Mega Gengar Shadow Tag to trap victims in. Then, Greninja's ability to get stab on basically any attack with Protean allowed it to threaten a huge amount of the format. Landorus with Ice Beam, Hydro Pump for the Omnipresent Incineroar, and a smattering of coverage options like Dark Pulse and Grass Knot for other common threats. This led it to have a few finishes, but nothing crazy. This is not a banger. And finally, Chestnut, who, just like Delphox, has never top aided a big official event. Maybe these guys will get some love with Pokemon Legends ZA. Seems like they really need it. Gen 6 is kind of a flop. And next, we have our friends in the Alola region. Starting out with the fire type, we have Incineroar. I made a whole goddamn video about this guy, so I'm not gonna try and cram the whole thing into this video too. If you want the whole story, go watch it. That being said, once the Cinderor got access to Intimidate, it became one of the best Pokemon of all time. Great stats, powerful stab moves like Flare Blitz and Knock Off, and a virtual Batman utility belt of supporting options like Fake Out, Parting Shot, U-Turn, Snarl, Taunt. I could go on about this guy for at least 8 minutes and 1 second, but he is one of the strongest Pokemon of all time. Go watch the other video for more. Primarina has seen a little bit of play in Generation 7 as a bulky water type, with two special event top 8s and a top 8 of the 2018 Korean Nationals. Primarina is a slow, bulky water and fairy type. Its hidden ability, Liquid Voice, turns its sound moves into water type attacks, which lets it turn Hyper Voice into a 100% accurate, spread, special water type attack with decent base power. Something that very few water types get access to, or at least not without a downside like Surf or Water Spout. Primarina also saw a fair bit of play as a good Dynamax option during the COVID era of Pokemon. With multiple Primarinas in top 8 of the first Players' Cup, and a good amount of success in other online, unofficial tournaments. And then, there's Decidueye, who to my knowledge has zero high placements. Unfortunately, this guy just doesn't really have any tools that make him worth using. His hidden ability, Long Reach, is fine for making sure you don't activate abilities like Flame Body or items like Rocky Helmet when you attack, but with its mediocre attacking stats and speed and support move pool, there just isn't really much of a reason to try with this guy. Now we're in the home stretch. We're in the Galar region. Well, since Cinderace was absolutely broken in singles, he was only okay in VGC, with only one top 8 at the Players' Cup to his name. But to my understanding, Cinderace was a pretty popular hyper-offense Pokemon during the online COVID era, where most tournaments were run unofficially by grassroots organizers. Its hidden ability lets Cinderace change its type to whatever type it was using to attack, giving it a stab boost basically no matter what. This was super strong with Dynamax, because you could give Cinderace a whole bunch of different types of moves to always get the max move you wanted. Not to mention, with its G-Max form, its G-Max Fireball, just did insane damage. But as a purely offensive Pokemon, Cinderace fell to the wayside as power levels crept back up as the game got older. Next, we have Inteleon, who has two regional top eights to his name, but not much else. In early Sword and Shield, Inteleon had what it takes for some players to use it as a fast water type special attacker. Unlike Cinderace, his G Max form and ability, Sniper just wasn't enough to let him hold on to relevance, and soon he fell to the wayside. And finally, 
we have Rillaboom. Oh boy, where to begin? Rillaboom didn't start off as a crazy strong Pokemon until two things happened. One, its hidden ability came out, Grassy Surge, which sets up Grassy Terrain, and two, the move Grassy Glide was released in the Isle of Armor. This move, which was 70 base power at the time, became a priority move if Pokemon used it in Grassy Terrain. This combined with Rillaboom's other great attributes, such as access to Fake Out, the extremely powerful stab move Woodhammer, good coverage options like U-Turn, Super Power, and High Horsepower, turned Rillaboom into an exceptionally bulky, pivoty, offensive Pokemon. Heck, it was even a little defensive since Grassy Terrain heals everybody every turn. As soon as Rillaboom got access to both these tools, he won the first Player's Cup, and the second, and just kinda didn't stop doing well at events. When he was introduced in Gen 9, he lost access to Grassy Glide and some of his coverage at first, but he was still strong. And when he got back High Horsepower and Grassy Glide when the Teal Mask DLC came out, even though Grassy Glide was nerfed, oh boy, did he just keep going with an insane number of regional top eights. Rillaboom is probably the strongest starter Pokemon besides Incineroar. Before we get to Gen 9, we have to talk about the Hisui guys real quick. Hisui and Typhlosion, Decidueye, and Samurott. All are like, they're fine Pokemon. Hisui and Typhlosion is actually pretty good, but the unfortunate truth is they were introduced into competitive play for the first time at the same time as Pokemon like Landorus and Urshifu, and these guys just couldn't compete. Maybe they'll be introduced earlier in Gen 10 or something, so they have a real chance to show their stuff, but for right now, <laughs> Finally, we're at Generation 9. These guys all had access to their hidden abilities right away unlike a lot of other generations, so they were pretty good. Skeletor's hidden ability, unaware, makes it ignore opponent's stat boosts, offensively and defensively. This made it a great Pokemon to deal with Don Dozo, who is everywhere in early Scarlet and Violet, that is, assuming you terrestrialize your Skeletor. Combine that with its supporting move pool of stuff like Yawn and Will-O-Wisp, and its signature move, Torch Song, which raised its special attack by one stage every time it attacked, and you were cooking, at least in early Scarlet and Violet. By the second month of the game's competitive life cycle, powerful Pokemon like Iron Bundle and Fluttermane came about and destroyed any chance this guy had. Despite being pretty good, he never even got a single top 8. Next, we have Quaquaval. At first, this guy seems pretty strong. Aqua Step, its signature move, does decent damage and boosts your speed. And with the ability Moxie, if you KO something with Aqua Step, it's like you're getting your own Dragon Dance. Plus one speed from Aqua Step, plus one attack from Moxie. But that's just not how it worked out. In the beginning, Dondozo, Amoongus, and Sylveon all proved to be really unfortunate threats that Quaquaval just couldn't deal with. And once the paradoxes were legal, Fluttermane and Iron Bundle made sure this poor duck stayed down. Finally, we have Meowskarata, the most successful of our last set of starters. This Pokemon had Protean as its hidden ability, and its signature move, Flower Trick, was a 70 base power grass type physical attack that always critically hits. This made it devastating in early Scarlet and Violet, especially with how it interacted with Don Dozo. Critical hits ignore your opponent's stat boosts, meaning Meowskarata functionally ignored Don Dozo's commander boosts and hit it with devastating, super effective damage. Meow also had had good priority options like Sucker Punch, good coverage with Low Kick and Play Rough, and other support options like Knock Off and Trick Room. This let it be pretty successful in the beginning of Scarlet and Violet, even winning the first regional of the game's history. But just like the other two, once Iron Bundle and Fluttermane showed up, its days were numbered. But unlike the other two, it was powerful enough that people kept trying to use it for a little while. So, there we have it. Every starter trio. Now, which is the strongest? You might think it must be Generation 7 with Incineroar, or Generation 8 with Rillaboom. After all, they're the two strongest starters. But, what's the answer? Generation 1. While Incineroar and Rillaboom are insanely strong, Generation 1 is the only generation that has had multiple starters that were absolute all-stars across different games and generations, Charizard and Venusaur. If this was an individual ranking, it'd be Incineroar, sure, but we're going by generation as a whole. What do you think of these guys? Did I miss anything important? Disagree with my choice? Let me know. Thanks for watching, and bye.